Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Joe Martin Show. Today I'm here with Fate. So can you guys introduce yourselves? I guess I'll start. Um, I'm Devin. I play drums. I'm Fernando. I sing and play guitar. Name's Damien. I also sing and play guitar. Uh, my name's Santiago Suaje and I play bass. So how did this band all get together? Like, how did you guys get together? Um... Uh, it was with started with me and Damien yeah, here. Started with um, both of us. I don't know. It was weird how we kind of started, you know, as how friends. We met, like we first met at Mexlan at the convention center, and he came up to me because I was wearing a, a Megadeth shirt from the show and the Corpus. He was like, "Hey, you went to that show?" And I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Were you in the pit?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he's like, "That was really sick." And I was like, "Yeah, it was." So that happened. We split, and then we met at Boot Jack because I was working there, and then he started working there. And I was like, you look familiar. I just don't know where. I couldn't remember where. And then we ran into each other at a show, and he was like, you're into this? I'm like, yeah. You're into this? He's like, yeah. I was like, okay. Sick. And then, yeah, we started jamming out after that. How did and you then, jump from that to like Jackie jamming out? Like, I don't know. Mm. I, it's because whenever I was working at Boot Jack with him, I wasn't talking with him at first. It was like the first week, but yeah. I saw he had long hair and he was, you know, kind of like just move around like with a, you know, a little swagger. I was like, okay, <laughs> he, he kind of he kind of down with it. I don't know, but yeah. I didn't ask him until I saw him at the Salsa House show, and I was like, hey, yo, what's good? And like, you like this? It was yeah, like literally. And a um, couple of days after that, after work, we just um, went to go jam at my house, and and went on from there, man. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So I, yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, Fern and I, we were in a band before, the Physical Paranoia, and uh, I wasn't playing bass at the time, but then all synth. yeah, I was all synth and piano, and like I had to fill in drums because we didn't have a drummer, uh, and then they met, and you know they formed, they started Fate. And at the time, you know, physical paranoia, we weren't doing as much. We weren't getting as many shows. So uh, I started getting interested in playing the bass. And then a couple months now, uh, I've been playing the bass with uh, Fate. And, uh, you know, I just eventually joined the band. And, uh, and then Devin, yeah, well, he actually, came in later. Well, with me, it wasn't until y'all what played y'all first open mic. Uh, yeah, we played our first open yeah. mic, but before that, him and I jammed mm -hmm. when he was part of another band. Yeah, I was in another band with yeah. my, my and friend. We jammed, and I told him about Fernie and I, and he was like, yeah, I'm down to jam with y'all too. I would, well, after the show, he heard us, and he was like, hey, I could do something maybe. It's actually funny because Jalen um, from Blam, he actually like got us connected with him too because... At the time, me and him were desperately trying to find a drummer. Like, oh my, we'll put Craigslist. <laughs> yeah, so hard. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky that you have a drummer and a bass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But if we were down bad, and I guess um, I t went to Jalen one time at the show, and I told him, like, yeah, bro, we're trying to find a drummer. He's like, hey, I can, like, fill in for y'all. But the thing is, the situation with him, that he lives very far from us, yeah. and... Um, He's like, yeah, I can fill in, but I need a drum set. And he asked Devin if he can use his drum set. And Devin's like, yeah, for sure. But um, there were some things, like, it was too far from, uh, like, where we would need a jam at. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty far. And so we just like, oh, well, if we're going to use Devin's drum set. Might as well use Devin. Might as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, just kicked out from there. And, like, this dude's drum is insane. And it actually goes with, like, the music that we're trying to go with and he actually just just fills in the the pieces of the puzzle like with our sound because at first it was just me and Damo just doing covers and just trying to write songs but after like we got him in it was it just took us off and we just kept consistently just practicing it was pretty badass thank you guys <laughs> so like your team immediately started off with uh, original music or how did because you said you were doing like you were, you were already writing music yeah. So yeah. Start off with like cover songs. And yeah. Like eventually, jump, jump into like original music, but nah, like with me, hard. well, he was he was always writing music, but with me personally, I would just write lyrics. I kind of dabbled in guitar, but he put me on. I'm not even gonna lie. He taught me a good amount of 
other songs that I didn't know. And it put me like into a position where I was singing and playing as well, which I've never done. And that kind of opened up my creativity. Hell yeah, and bro. yeah, that's why now I put like my poetry or whatever I wrote into guitar. What do you typically like write a poem? Personal experiences, just personal experiences kind of just, well, like with the music, I try to make it kind of relatable as well. Somewhat uh, make me like have a little catch, like with all yours, just like uh, just have something they could sing along as well. Uh, I, like, I like to focus more on like the way the music makes you feel. Of course, like everybody wants to do that, right? But with what I'm, what I write, what I do, I just try to focus more on like the feeling you get than technicality, I guess. I'm not, I'm not a soloist. I'm more of a rhythm guitar kind of guy. But so I'm honestly, just... It honestly took us a while to get to that point too. Yeah, it really did. at first, we, we were just like learning how to write covers. Not write covers, but learn them and just record us playing for like Instagram or something. And we'll just be doing that over and over until we get that take right. Bad Fish. <laughs> we, we played Bad Fish like a hundred times. And we just insane. we kept doing that. And honestly, like learning other people's songs and getting inspiration from them helped us to put that in our sound and like see how like two guitarists or two musicians can work together and just form something and create something. Because honestly, fate was an accident. Like it's that's kind of the reason why it's like fate. Like it's just meant to be like him, me yeah. and him going to that Megadeth show. Like, if we didn't go to that show, there's no way we'd have been like, oh, yeah, let's You would have came up to me without that shirt. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. And, like, just a whole bunch of other stuff. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's really crazy. Like, the music I listen to as well, like, he's in the blues, rock, oh, yeah, you know, classic what are, what are rock. Your, what, are your, what are your backgrounds in music? Yeah. So, I grew up with my mom. So, she's she was into that new metal. She was really young when she had me. So, she was angsty and rebellious so slipknot corn deftones all that jazz but then also like growing up like periphery born of osiris like more deathcore stuff like that that's what i listen to um, <laughs> for me no i have a very different taste it's like it's they uh, I, I came into the band and i you know i didn't really listen to much punk or metal or you know anything that hard but at uh, all. like at all. <laughs> at all like before before i joined my taste was you know uh bob marley uh fucking uh police uh beatles um classics bro like you know yeah. like uh, Led zeppelin i love uh who else you know more relaxed more it's like bluesies reggae yeah yeah and i love jazz as well uh, but once I got introduced to the scene, uh, to this type of scene, and once I started playing with them, it was completely, it was a switch. It was like yeah. a completely different uh, style of play. And uh, no, I've, I've really enjoyed it. I've, uh, uh, I really enjoyed play, playing on stage now and playing that type of music. It's like a the totally chugs, different bro, energy. Got to you. Yeah, no, the judge, 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 judge. Yeah, but that, that was my taste of music before. Um, shit. I've always been a classic rock type of dude. Like, being in the truck with my dad, just that's all he would play. And he got me into metal. Um, he played Megadeth, and I was like, oh, like, just, just what the fuck? Um, but, I, like, growing up, I was always into rap, like hip hop and stuff like that. But right when I got my guitar before the pandemic, um, I started getting heavy into Nirvana and I was like, hey, you know what, this is pretty good music. Like, that's what it kind of inspired me to get that too. ACDC as well. Um, and af after that, like, I just started exploring different types of music genres and, and seeing what I can, like, I don't know, just when I hear music, it's, it's, it's either like good or bad. It's just, it's just music. It's just like, I don't know, it's weird, but I don't, I'm not biased to any type of music. I, I love everything but main thing is blues i love the blues and uh classic rock that's what it's my thing well with me i kind of had to discover that type of music because like i grew up 
with my dad listening to like hip hop, R and B, and all that shit. So that was that was kind of what I was used to. It wasn't until like middle school when I kind of like started venturing now. You know what I'm saying? My taste kind of expanded into like like acoustic instrument, not really like acoustic, but like with electric and just all the instrumentals and stuff. I remember the first band I started really li listening to was Avenged Sevenfold. Not only because like they're they're just amazing, just in general, but also because of the drumming. Yeah. You know, that really took a big toll on like my ins inspiration. Not a toll, but like it just inspired me and the kick started, well, what like, I, I am today. Also with that, the Slipknot, also, what else? Alice in Chains. Now that 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 brings a big part in like my style. You could just you could hear like a mix of most drummers, like corn. What else? What else? Mm, Foo Fighters, a lot of Foo Fighters. Dave Grohl, Nirvana. I'm very inspired by him. And yeah, it's just, just there. It's pretty big in transition because I think like when it comes to like rap and rock, like it almost seems to be like the opposite. So people don't like really like listen to each other's music. Yeah. The fact that you actually did that transition is interesting. Cause like I had to, I don't know. I just kind of didn't like the like the online generated sounds and all that stuff like you could like find a lot of interesting sounds just explore and go like you know in different universes with that yeah but I like i like the raw like just to keep it raw like that sound it's just something else i really enjoy that i prefer to stick to that honestly it's interesting because again like, like when it comes to you guys like it's kind of easy to like which are stick the punk side but once you're like you're moving in from a completely different genre it's kind of like oh shit like yeah honestly growing up i, I i've actually been through a lot of like different stages with music too like in middle school, like Frank Sinatra, Bruno Mars, oh, wow. bro, I was on that. <laughs> you know, like yeah. that was that was that was my thing too. But yeah, and then in high school, like my freshman year, was like a lot of indie, like mainstream indie stuff like that. And then I actually just recently started getting into like alternative stuff like that, like The Smiths. Yeah, I've been put on here and there. Yeah, it's really cool. Honestly, it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're really good. Yeah, because like, recently I got to see The Cure. And I like, there's really? like, the rivalry between like, The Smiths and The Cure. <laughs> no, uh, no, Austin. No, Austin. That's like, that's like, that's the fact true. that some of these artists, like these legacy artists, keep their voice intact, it's amazing because there's like Molly Crew, or, like, where that lead singer is like. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, that voice is gone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the roses. Yeah, oh, yeah. Axel. Axel. That's fucked. That and well, there's another one, Bon Jovi, and there's another one where it kind of this the like, classic rock and. The hair metal scene. Yeah. Like, gone. yeah. Yeah, no, that's but, hard. Hard to keep some, up some with. Some do like the one that makes me the most was Steven Tyler. So I saw Aerosmith Smith for like 2015. Oh yeah. Do a kid like he still has the, that high voice. Yeah. Like this. No, mm. another. I I uh, a couple years ago I went to a Rolling Stones concert and oh my yeah, god Mick yeah. Jagger oh yeah, you can't beat him yeah. and no uh, yeah dude and they're literally yeah they're literally 90 but they're still rocking yeah, yeah it's incredible it's the stamina yeah. the longevity yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's insane. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he does, All over the stage. Miss you. Oh. I love that song. That song is great. Yeah. yeah. I love shows. I actually I love going to shows like concerts. Yeah. Like I've I've been a few. My first was Bruno Mars. My first my my first my first show was Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars and then too. and then after that it was Slayer and then Cannibal Corpse and Lamb of God and I'm on a Marth. It was sick. <laughs> it was fucking sick. I think my first concert was like Five Finger Death Punch. They actually played here in Farm, surprisingly. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was like a while back. Yeah. Damn. It was them uh, and some other band called Gemini Syndrome. I think, uh, I think this May I was supposed to play there too, but they didn't show up. Fuck. Yeah. My first concert was The Baby, and I got there for free. <laughs> <laughs> uh, remember John Mendez? Yeah. He had uh, tickets, and they were, at that time, it was like buy one, get one free. Um, Cause he was going through like controversy and stuff, but he played here at the arena, the the Bird Ogden, and we were like in the in the seats. But John, he knew like a, a guy that worked there at that arena. He's like, hey, like come down here, like come say hi, and we just stayed down there <laughs> and at front row. But I don't know, I, I don't consider that. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's my first concert. But my first concert, I think so, was Metallica. Like, oh shit! <laughs> Where was that one at? It was in Atlanta. Um, me and my dad, we went flying over there. It's pretty cool. Atlanta's beautiful. It's a beautiful city. 
Nah, well, I haven't been in the concert like outside of the valley. Or you see in the, in the valley too? In the valley, yeah. yeah. Well, I, the first concert I ever like saw, I remember it was like my first ever gig with my first ever band before this band. And like no one really showed up because there was like some controversy at that place that we played at. I'm not gonna say the name, but um, um, it was just the bands that we really just had to play in front of the bands. And like we're like the fresh, you know, the new kids on the block. So we were kind of scared. But I mean, we're opening too. So it was kind of cool. I remember who was there? The Hollowheads <laughs> when they were a thing. And then Blam also. Who else? Who else? Simply Blinded was there also. It was just. Was that an open mic or? Uh, no. Or an actual show? No, I believe it was a show. So I had seen them at a similar open mic where you also see people, the Simply Blinded, Blam, and Hollowheads. Yeah. I'm not too sure on that. It probably yeah. was. But yeah. That was my one. Oh, that's actually I, shit. I I went to like communicate with y'all. Yeah, it's crazy. That's uh, that's th that's how we uh, got you in the band because yeah, you that's right. Yeah, <laughs> that we knew he played guitar, but we had never you know we had never asked him if he'd want to join the band. But after that day, we because started talking I, way more. I and saw them, I saw y'all struggle, bro. Yeah, I was like, no, need that. that <laughs> That bad. That first concert, it was rough, man. What happened with that one? So I, I was switching from synth to uh, to drums, and uh, I don't know. It was just a two man concert, you know. Uh, our lead singer Nico, uh, it wasn't the best performance. Uh, it was y'all's first performance? Yeah, it was. All, we were nervous, <laughs> yeah, you know? and it was really cold that day as well. But um, uh, it was all right, you know. We, we you you live and you learn and you you keep on improving, and that's what I think we've been doing. Uh, I went up to them. I was dead ass high off acid. Like I, I it was crazy because it was just trippy. Like I've I've known him since middle school, and just to see him like making music and just playing it live, it was just like a different like whoa. Like I don't know. I we had the opportunity to do that, yeah. but after seeing them. Uh, I went up to them while they were loading up, and I was like, hey, y'all need an extra guitarist? And they're like, yes, bro, yes. But the thing is, no I wasn't... No hesitation. Yeah, I wasn't living here at, at, at the time. I was living yeah. in Refugio, um, finishing my last semester of high school. And, like, every weekend, I would come down and just visit family. And I mm. wouldn't even visit family. I would just nah, go practice yeah. with <laughs> We were like, get your ass over here. We need to fucking practice. And we need cool. to play. And yeah, we had so many jam sessions and yeah, and then we started practicing together as a band and that's how we kind of got our start, uh, got used to uh, playing shows and, you know, playing together. And playing together and the whole process that comes with playing the show, you know, like trying to DM all these places, all these venues and, you know, getting our name out there and uh, I feel like that's, that's that kind of experience has helped us help fate get a little more uh, noticed and a little more out there as well. Gotta be bold. Definitely. Yeah. What stuff have you guys learned from your previous bands that are if you're playing out to fate? Yeah. Yeah. Um like our last band, Physical Paranoia, we had like the past five songs that we've released on our Spotify. None of it was like a whole band contribution. It was just one person. And like we never had it like a saying and whether we want this to be released or not and like it's it sucks but you know it's like yeah it was it was <laughs> it's very unorganized it was and it still is but um that's you know i i feel like now that we knew or were able to identify that that was unorganized now we could you know bring bring that knowledge to here be like no we could get organized we could communicate together bring ideas to the table that the whole the whole band likes and it's more it's a lot more hands-on contribution as, yeah it's everyone everyone's putting their piece everyone's putting their part and uh, i think that's why the music sounds better than it yeah better than physical paranoia <laughs> and it's funny because we're all physical paranoia except for him yeah. yeah so actually i've never been in any other band <laughs> this is my first band oh, yeah. um but I mean, even then, like, I'm I'm still reaching out to people trying to like contribute as well. Like Nico Doom, shout out to Nico Doom, super super sick guy, fucking awesome. Yeah, he got us our um, last two shows. He got us the one at the Dungeon. No, 
Yeah, the dungeon and then the gremlin. Yeah, it was it was fucking sick. Really, really cool. And, but just like reaching out to him and like other people, like it's it's helped. You're, like you're just, literally learning on the job right now. Yeah, yeah. Like, and it's fun, honestly. Like just reaching out to people, like contacting people about like merch, stickers. Like we're trying, we have some ideas for um, merch kind of. So hopefully we get that out soon. Coming soon. Yeah. Coming soon. <laughs> hopefully we need to soon. record music. And record too. music too, yeah. yeah. And like playing our shows, like from where we started, it was just us two. And like we played at an open mic. We did covers. It was a blood moon. It was, while yeah, we that's funny because we all, like each and one of us, we all played in the open mic in different bands. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, no, literally. And then our second show, it was still us too, like, but he was there at the show and he was like, hey, we can, I can help you out. And so that <laughs> happened. And, and then I think by like our fourth show, we got Santi. And then now we're on our seventh going strong. Sick. Like from, and like our songs from where they started and where they are now, like they've they've been changing the entire time like if you go back from from just us two to well to now obviously now we have two different sounds accompanying and complementing our two sounds like it's fucking Literally sick every time we jam like every time there's just something different about like a new idea the song. and we're like yeah. we record it like on the voice memos and we listen back to it like when we're just chilling and yeah. we're like oh yeah that's, that's pretty like dope that you did that let's keep doing that and then we just remember that and we just keep doing this it's, yeah. it's pretty sick like I just love the fact that we can all <laughs> what kind yeah. of sound are you guys going for that's the hardest question <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, like, when it comes to like, like promote like from the promoters like, yeah of course you guys, like, okay, so this band will fit in with this genre or with this genre yeah. like, that eventually becomes like the whole like, the whole thing yeah like with our songs even then like they can always be switched up but we don't have a I, I don't think we have a straight sound like our songs, like from our first song that we played or our, our last show is completely than the third song that we played, you know? Like it's, um, our first song is Disease. That one starts off pretty uh, pretty fast. Punk. Yeah, punky for sure. And then like it goes to Heliophilia. Helio, we call it Helio. Um, it's it's pretty soft, but I mean, it, it has like a- like a little like progression, but it's it's still more to like, you can It's like alternative, you know, like, it's like almost kind of indie. Yeah, it's, it's it mixes. Yeah, everything it's between. it's everywhere, it's obviously, obviously, but it goes in. It, it, but I like the whole that. song goes in and out of different genres. Yeah, I like that just because like we don't have a certain sound. So so if like somebody likes one song or just that sound, we could build off of it or maybe just you know do something something with that, you know. So yeah. No, yeah, we're gonna, <laughs> so eventually that becomes a thing like okay, we're, we're like okay, and now I know I know how they sound like. Let me put them in this lineup because it makes sense and that becomes the issue where sometimes bands become disorganized with their sound and it becomes harder for them to get shows just because up as a promoter that like, you don't know, okay, like where do I put them? Like, yeah. It's an issue. Yeah, yeah no, of course. Yeah. Yeah, because Helio is way different than On the Quicks, which is On the Quicks is heavy. The, our, our most heavy is pretty fast. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy. Fast. <laughs> pretty fast paced, pretty, pretty fun. But like all yours, that one. Way, that like one's like punk. a it's like a surf punk vibe honestly has has kind of like a sublime kind of vibe too somewhat yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it's because like i'm getting contact with a lot of dance from socal it's like that surf sound I'm like okay maybe we can get these guys yeah <laughs> hell yeah um but yeah it's, i don't probably just alternative punk is there any bands that you, could, you guys could be compared to like in terms of sound but usually it makes it easier We've gotten a lot of different things, honestly. Yeah, I've gotten this uh, one older guy. He said that we remind him of the 80s. And then another one said Foo Fighters. Um, With drum, uh, Devin's drumming, which is a huge compliment. What, else did he say? <laughs> what was yeah. the other one that he said? It was Foo Fighters and... Modest Mouse. Oh, yeah, Modest Mouse. That, that guy said uh, he said that you look like young Kurt Cobain. Or, oh, oh yeah, yeah. James. James, James. Yeah, James. Walrus. Flying Walrus. Shout Kurt, out. Uh, a preppy Kurt preppy, Cobain. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out James. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. That night we sick playing with Souls Extolled. Fucking sick. Oh yeah. Shout out to Souls Extolled. <laughs> we love Very you, bro. People. Zach Black. Oh. Zach Black. <laughs> Jack Black. Sorry, Zach. Sorry, Zach. 
I went along with it too, but no, yeah. I love you, bro. <laughs> it's been, it's been peaches, pretty sick, peaches, like this, peaches, peaches. this yeah, little so ride so far. Started, you guys have been doing pretty well. Like, you've been getting a lot of yeah. shows lately. I'm like, this guy's popular yeah. right now. And there's nothing but positive vibes too, honestly. Like, we haven't Super gotten safe. anything bad. We haven't been part of anything bad either. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty it's pretty cool. Right? Come on, but yeah, no, it's it's really nice. Like, having people come up to us and be like, I really like your sound. And then them reaching out to us as well. Like, yeah. Carlos, shout out as well. Like, shout it's out. sick. Yeah, it's like, it's like and Rolly's photos. To, it's a good thing you're doing that because oh, it's yeah. one thing... Rolly. It's one thing having your role as your band, like whether it be the drummer, guitarist, and all those. But then it also becomes like, okay, who's the one who communicates the most with other people to get shows? Who's the one in charge of merch? Who's the one in charge of design? And all yeah. Stuff? Like, each it's, like all a, it's all a group effort, for yeah. sure. Because like, Santi, or, he's a... Sorry. He's, <laughs> he's like an artist, so, you know, with the design stuff... I really trust in you, you. and in like our creative process. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I am, I'm right now I'm studying graphic design and I have like an art Instagram. I'm really, I love art. And, uh, when it comes to like the designs for fate, he had a, um, a, a logo that he made, which is the F this, well, kind of that but the it was, Instagram, the Instagram it's the one logo. on our Instagram yeah. and then he sent me that and I was able to work with his idea and make it into something uh, like three dimensional but I yeah I love uh, I love working with a group because you get so many different inputs and and it's cool to uh, create um, like you know our, the new merch that we're trying to do right now where we're, it's in the works and uh, it's it's looking cool it's looking pretty cool and I, I like working with these guys because I, I like getting their input and we get to do to make cooler things and that's also because like we all know like what would look good yeah. for our vibe yeah. it's yeah. so sick it's kind of hard finding that though sometimes like because <laughs> where we like like I said like we don't have a certain sound and it's hard like if we we can't do like a Can't really pull this off, really. Can't really pull that off with like fate, you know. Yeah, it's yeah, not. Yeah, it's yeah. like kind of crazy, but like, I don't know. Like, I know this is gonna get me some hate, but like sometimes I don't like those logos because you can't really read them. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, and we're not really like a death metal. That's like kind of like death metal. Yeah, it's like crazy. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> on the bottom, they have like in regular text, like the actual name of the band. Yeah. And some people can read them. I'm like, just change it up. Yeah, there's no point. Sure. Like, just turn it up twice. That meme where it's like the cracky sofa and it's like all the cracks. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, dude. Sick. Like the history behind the design for Frank. Yeah. 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 He made that. I mean, but like the name. But the name. No, no, the design of the logo. Oh, that. Oh, that was just. It was just a quick. Yeah, sketch. that was just a quick little sketch. But I mean, like with the name though, like. I we we were we were like trying to come up with a name. We we're just riding in the car. Yeah, we're just like what the fuck? Like what should we what should if we do start a band? What is that going to like what's the name going to be? And like I just scrolled back through my memory a little bit and like um before this like uh the local band Fedemy, shout out as well. Um my dad slash stepdad. Well, he was my stepdad, but I just called him dad cuz he was like G as fuck sick guy um he was a vocalist for fed me and so i was around like growing up like that's where i listened to all the like death metal oh, like yeah. gent shit like that like periphery etc etc cetera. um with him he like would play a lot of a shit ton of games <laughs> shit ton of games and his gamer side would always be fate and like he also had some eps uh called pending fate and so i just thought about that and i was like mm, i like fate fate <laughs> i like fate a lot you know and like i think it'd be sick to kind of like carry on what he was he was doing as well so i just that's why i was also a little bit hes like hesitant on saying it because it's so like special to me like just that one word but like yeah i was like fate he's like yeah <laughs> so yeah fuck yeah cool. fuck. like he literally that's the first thing he said and i was like oh yes <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's where that's where it is but the design it's also still kind of changing like with the merch that we're thinking about there's like a little symbol and yeah maybe maybe y'all see it man i know i know maybe i'll see it. i'm not trying it looks it looks pretty cool looks pretty cool with the merch or no the timeline the timeline like estimated time when you guys like eta and i don't know like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, a couple months. Bro. I hope, dude. It's gonna be okay. Like, like two months. Oh, I don't know. My needs to struggle right now, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. But but yeah, for sure, we're we're gonna try to get that out fast yeah, so as soon as possible. Your dog, like, <laughs> mm. Yeah. Thanks, okay. Santi. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Cause I'll switch to the, cause, let's see where I do it. Mm, sorry, it's taking a while. Take it. What was like, I guess like your, like how did you come up with this design in general? I'll put it on the screen later on, uh, post, in post production. Cause this is the one, right? Yeah, yeah. How did you come up with that specific idea? So, uh, Fernando, he made oh, that, yeah. that symbol, the, the F, the T, the E, and how it forms an A. Yeah. So he made that and... Um, I drew it on my door, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. And I just have, like, a door just full of Sharpie drawings. And I was trying to think, how can I connect all the letters in that word together? And just to highlight that T, because it, it likes connected with that E. Um, so I just changed a different color. And I was like, oh, this can work. But, you know... It was like that's the one of the first designs I, just, I did for it, and like he just did it on on his uh, Adobe Illustrator, and yeah. it just it was fucking sick. I just made it. I just <laughs> put it on a computer, basically. I just like <laughs> three put it. I just got his idea, put it on my computer, and uh, effects and whatever. Yeah, it's pretty badass. Yeah, because I like I really like uh, graphic design. So like when you're talking about like all this stuff, I'm like, oh, it's, yeah. it's pretty cool. Thank you. Um, what about you two? Because you guys can make another party. Like, what, what else do you guys do? Like, besides just being a drummer, like, what other roles do you have in the band? Um, I say like, what's, what's the proper riff writer? Riff writer. That's that is true. <laughs> I do. This dude is crazy on the guitar. I don't. I don't like to think so. I think like I just. I just. I just. I just, I just pick up off bro, like this guy can play any <laughs> instrument, bro. He could shred on the bass as well, bro. He just. <laughs> camp, camp, bro. Yeah, like it's crazy. No, yeah, guys. he shows me up sometimes too. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, no. like I said, I'm not a soloist, but he's been. Like, no, I'm just like, oh, why, no. why, do you, why am I playing guitar it's for like, this band? Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> now with me, I mean, I'm more of a C, like a visual learner. You know what I'm saying? So like anything, just anything that I I find interesting or something that just that just you know just something sparks in me. I like I use it like as a inspiration like just to me hold the mic oh, <laughs> you gotta hold the mic oh, yeah, yeah, my bad my bad no yeah so like i know with fern like ever since he landed like the first ever riff for me to like just throw rhythm over like i was i was crazy amazed just like how it so fluently just comes up with that like i had to like just think about you know press like each string see where the note is and like how that could become a chord or whatever and he just like throws a progression on it and obviously i'm more comfortable on it because like it's actually like fluent so i could just throw a quick riff and that that in itself could also just like be a kickstarter to a new project or like just something you know what i'm saying and so that's that's really the thing with with us and our chemistry yeah. is that we're we're allowed to do that and like i'm glad we're allowed to do that because i've been i've been like with um i played with a couple other like you know musicians mm -hmm. and they don't really feel the same spark as you know these guys do you know it's, it's something completely different it's something that i praise a lot so and i really commend them Appreciate for that, that. Oh, for, for, is they over here coming to me? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta praise them for a second. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Wait, but yeah, yeah. I actually went to high school with him. Mm -hmm. That's how I know how we were yeah. in jazz band together. That's how I knew how he played drums. They were jamming before they were jamming. Yeah, yeah. that's great. That's that's crazy too. Yeah, yeah. Being being in band, I was a crazy band kid. I don't, I don't think. I don't think I'm, I'm not anymore. <laughs> ah, he always says cab. He doesn't believe me that I was in band. Like, who would lie about being joke. in band? That's kind of like a like who who lies about that? But I played trombone. Yeah, that was cool. I was always I guess. back percussion. <laughs> and for a while, I didn't even notice that Damien, because like, yeah, <laughs> I didn't know he played uh, trombone. I thought he played like trumpet. Or something. Nah, I played trombone. Yeah, that's crazy though. Mm. Like a couple years later. We just end up with them, yeah. yeah. And like with guitar too, like it was, it was always on and off. Just recently, honestly, like give me a good year, uh, I've been like 
pretty dedicated to it. Like, but it was always on and off for like a few years, and I just play the same thing. Well, I still do, to be honest. I still like if I find a riff that I like, I'm just like, mm, I'm gonna play this for like a month. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that's. Santi that's just that's picked up the bass. Yeah, I just started playing bass, bro. Like I've been playing bass for probably after like you got back from Maui, four months, you just transformed four or five months now. I think. Yeah, it's 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 been a little bit, and I had to have a huge break because I I went on a trip for a month and then I came back uh, last week Monday, and then on Friday we had a show. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> the pressure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that was pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, he had two days to get ready for the last show, yeah. which was insane. That, that actually like sick. a day, honestly. <laughs> I already told him that. It was funny. But no, actually our last show was really good, like energy wise, musically, even musically too, actually. Like looking back at it, like in my head, I thought it was like, it was like a lot worse than what it really was, to be honest. Like where we kept up the energy, which was sick. Like I usually I'm usually kinda stiff when I play, actually, but like that day I was like, I'm gonna try to move, yeah, we're, you know. We're getting to, a lot more comfortable you know, like on stage. I, yeah, I'm really trying to work on shows. that. Yeah, yeah. The, I was gonna say, yeah, uh, our first like as our first song was like kinda iffy, but after that, you know, when once we got to more and more songs, we got more and more comfortable. Yeah, we picked started it up. playing better. Like Definitely. even the first time we played with all of us, all four of us, uh at the at the shack, we were just looking down at our instruments. I like we're just yeah. like this just playing yeah, yeah. Yeah. but like now like I, we we've got um Rolly's photos um on instagram shout out to him shout out he um recorded our last show and did like a, this clip and you can see like us we're, we're looking a lot more comfortable and you're, you're having that speech person yeah Most definitely. we're yeah. building it so it's it feels amazing it's like finally have that confidence it's to do me that excited <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool yeah. where do you see yourself going for now like what's what's the plans for fate right now because of from now, let's see it down maybe five months. Oh, probably try. just keep consistently getting more shows and uh, recording music and like trying to sell some merch. That's yeah. my get ideal. Get our names out there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Get our names out there we, just a little more. We definitely need to start uh, releasing music so people can listen to, so yeah. people can know our songs. I hear at least like five people after every gig ask for like. Spotify, yeah, Spotify. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Are you guys on anything? It's like, no, actually, no. we're not. But hopefully soon. Hopefully. Coming I mean, soon. But it's in the works, and yeah, definitely merch. To, to, <laughs> yeah, because we, we're start all funding. unemployed right <laughs> now. We're not, we're not, like giving it away. But, like, what kind of stuff are you doing with the merch? What what kind of stuff are we doing? Like decals yeah, like shirts, and shirts. Stickers. Yeah, it's stickers. just gonna be shirts, stickers, yeah. maybe sweaters if we have enough. Banners. I I kind of want a banner. Ooh, banner. Yeah. yeah. Banners, cool. Just to have it the backdrop. Bit, uh, we we have ideas for like everything like our our design right now can fit on anything really a banner a shirt would look fucking awesome a sticker even even a sticker like I feel like a sticker it would it would have great value that would be great <laughs> we're just trying to get a lot of ideas so we can have a lot of options right now yeah. the main thing is the music it's the main thing we're trying to yeah literally. get out there yeah because that's when people like, need to focus on like the financial part which is kind of like. People don't like talking about kiss money, but then like yeah. to continue as a band, like you need to have that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thing, right? We need to be realistic about it. Yeah, yeah. It's like movies, like where people think like most of the movie, the money for movies are made like through the movie, take ticket sales, but no, it's all that merchandise yeah. stuff that yeah. yeah really helps the uh, movies out. The minions. <laughs> but then, yeah, Sorry. no. Definitely. Yeah, hopefully, hope hopefully we get that out pretty soon. That'd be sick. What songs do you really guys want? Like, what songs do you guys really want to record? White Lies. White Lies, definitely. Yeah, they really, they really want that one. Um, me personally, personally, feeling me personally, because I, I feel like that one, I feel like it would be, it sounds sick, like on professionally recorded with the little break that we have at the end. But yeah, I'm sick. even, even yeah, White, White Lies is, is still pretty good. We it's like a, I've heard like it's like a. Um, Oh, what's this genre called? Oh, it's Brain shoegaze. Fart. Shoegaze. Oh. shoegaze. It has like a shoegazy vibe. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. This getting really popular right now. The yeah. Yeah. So that that song. I also really enjoy 2B. Yeah. 
Yeah, I like that one too. That one builds up. Yeah. That one builds up. Yeah, actually a lot of our songs, like they, they start off pretty pretty slow and they have builds and then crescendos, decrescendos, whatever. Dynamics. I, I like I Am a lot. And, well, all this, on all the quicks. All our songs. Yeah. like all Fuck of our songs. <laughs> like, yeah, like, oh, do you typically like either you release singles or like, you release an EP or an album? Yeah, hopefully we just get like an EP, a solid EP. That would be, be, nice. be sick. Something we could be proud of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something I could show my mom be like, <laughs> I did it. Oh, yeah, I mean, it really helps out because then you can start getting gigs out of that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's that the, be the sick. listeners, and they see that people are listening. And which cities would you guys like to play? Definitely Austin. Austin, Austin San Antonio, sure. Houston, like just the major cities around just Texas. Have like, yeah, have a little, little Texas tour. Just, that'd, be, that'd be cool. Nashville. Tennessee. Oh, crazy. Goddamn Tennessee. <laughs> no, nah, that would be. <laughs> I can't believe our like the la- the show before our last we um sound checked Folsom Prison. Oh yeah, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. we Folsom Prison our sound check. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, like, bum, 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 bum. yeah, that was our sound check. Yeah. It's not bad, bro. It was pretty cool. He just started playing it, so I, I had to go along with it. I didn't really have a choice. <laughs> it was already it was already happening. But it was fire. <laughs> that was really cool. So yeah, yeah, because I need to release like a such music like, like actually live because I haven't had the opportunity yet to like really listen like shoegaze alternative. It's really interesting because I love that music. Mm. Yeah. Again, like I don't want to get in trouble with the scene, but like sometimes I get tired of the not, not tired, but like there's like an oversaturation of the heavy like hardcore music. No, yeah, yeah, I understand yeah. that. Like, you well, you kind of want to listen to something a little bit different. I, yeah. I think the same way, honestly. Um, like I love that heavy stuff. Like yeah. to death, but you know, at, at a certain point, you're just like, uh, like I just want to like just relax and yeah, listen to some, like, some actual like yeah, progressively course. good music. I'm not saying that's not bad or anything, but you know, like all the the shows now are is just that. It's like more of a deathcore vibe, you know, crowd killing. I'm gonna I'm gonna punch you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like like yeah, I, I, I don't want, it's, 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 it's kind of scary, you know, like being at a show and like watching your back because you know some some fucking guys and they're but they're fun yeah. as fuck. Those <laughs> shows know? are fun. They're, like, sure. they're fun for sure, but yeah, there's, yeah. every once in a while it's just like mm. just want to vibe out. Mm, yeah. I don't, don't want to be, be looking over my shoulder. Taking pictures like rollies and a bunch of like be careful, kids. One wrong punch and that camera's out. Oh baby. And it's been fun. I mean, like, still, like, even with that, because just, like, I see pictures where, like, guys get, like, their teeth knocked out and you see their blood and everything. Yeah. One time I was in the pit, there was this girl, she was lowballing everybody, just, who's Jum? Who's Jum? That's how she was circling, and she got me. And I was like, <laughs> dang! <laughs> and nah. I was gonna go say something to her, but after the song ended, I, like, I left the pit and I just hear some other guy go, like, I got him in the nuts! Oh. Like, celebratory, and I was like, ah, oh, okay, I'm not gonna, she's just doing that. <laughs> But it was funny. It, was, it wasn't. It was fun for me, but it was funny. That's pretty metal. Yeah, I also got kicked in the face. I got crowd killed. I was sideline watching, enjoying the show. It was an inconvenient truth at the Sauce House. That was funny because we, we actually yeah, wrote our we, first yeah. lyrics together about that experience. Yeah, it was, was funny as fuck. Was <laughs> fuck. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> some, How'd it go? It was, it was called Busted Lip, I think. It was <laughs> some stupid <laughs> shit. It was, um, of course, saw on the spoon real heavy. Got I got that I got this last week from trying to love you or something like that. Nah, that nah, was. I can't even remember. But that yeah, no, that night was fucked. Dude. That night was so fucked. Like I left with a blister in my mouth. I couldn't eat, man. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I could, but like the salt would hurt. Like if I if I wanted to eat some fries or like some chips, bro, that shit. It hurt to eat. And no, that's not that's no fun. That's that was actually <laughs> lyrics too. <laughs> nah, normally when I mosh, I'm the one doing the damage to other people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I just I, I don't want a busted lip. <laughs> so, but it's fun. I don't do it every every time. Just just if the the music's really you know taking me over, then it's a different story. Yeah, I'm not mad all the time. So like uh, like I just wouldn't. In the in the pit, you gotta you gotta unleash something. Yeah, you something. gotta. Or sometimes I see like just Fern run into there because he's really feeling it. Yeah. I just follow. We follow him. Yeah. <laughs> like.
This is our head bump. It's honestly always Fernie that goes into the pit first. I'm not gonna lie. I always see this fight, this fucking guy running in, and then I'm just like, oh, do I want to go in? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It just depends on the on the mood I'm in. But I love it. It's so no, funny. yeah, actually, like there is a shot, like bummer shot when it was raining. Oh, uh, dude, that that was fun because. You know, you really couldn't, you that really, yeah, insane. you really couldn't you were move, there too, you, yeah, you really, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it was fucking sick, like, you really couldn't move, so, like, people were pushing each other, but they were, like, you know, <laughs> trying also not to fall, so, like, it was just a good vibe all around, and it was fun. just fucking fun, like, and it was raining, I was like, ah, like, it was such a good vibe, that, that was a really good show, I just had deja vu, <laughs> what the fuck, <laughs> yeah, I remember, I remember that show, yeah, yeah, it was like, really bad, yeah, that, that was a sick show. It was bad for me because I was carrying the camera around. Yeah, that's They wanted me to take pictures for some movie that, that was going on, whatever. I'm not sure you guys were there. In the yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't even know what happened to that thing, honestly. The movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah like, they're going to make a movie about the, about the, like, the scene, whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not. Uh, yeah, no, they didn't they watch you to pay in that audition. Yeah. They told me that they were going to start recording in filming in April. Cap. <laughs> I, haven't, I, know, I, haven't, uh, I haven't heard anything about that in a while actually i kind of forgot like, that was a like, thing oh yeah like we got we got the second round and then after that like, he just died off it blew out the window it's a good idea yeah because like, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of stories here in the valley like when it comes to like the scene because we had people like freddie fender like that's like a big one mm. now we have grupo from from that like we have a bunch of like stories that like, people could talk talk about yeah but it was pretty cool actually like with the scene I mean, I've also recently just got into it. Maybe I'm like a year in, I want to say. Like, it's it's crazy knowing like that was right under my nose like the entire time. Like, I had no idea about it up until like a year ago. And like watching it grow as well, like watching all these new bands come in and like even like the older ones coming up with new shit and like just, you know, keep doing what they're doing. It's fucking sick. Like it's super sick. That's probably like the the, the weird part about the scene where like, it's hard to find it. Like it exists, but just like bumping into it, like you need to know other people. Yeah, like, yeah. Like knowing where everything's gonna be going on. Yeah. I mean, if you, uh, I mean, if you follow their their IGs, yeah. they, they they keep you posted on everything. Like, they they're pretty good at, at that. And like I, but like yeah, if you don't know their Instagrams and if you don't know like where to find all that stuff, it's just hard. Like you gotta know. <laughs> way to find it like, I guess you know the bands personally like yeah, yeah then you're like a like friend of a friend band. yeah and also like getting in, like to know all the bands and like the DJs again like Nico Doom Cuerpo fucking Odin dude it's it's sick like they're, what they're doing and like also like trying to like bring like that EDM sound also like missing it like with the punk sound and like just a, like heavier sound as well like trying to do something with the scene it's pretty cool like I can respect that. No, yeah, sure. that's definitely good because then you can bring in like other audiences that normally wouldn't be in the scene to like yeah it out just a little bit. Yeah, and like you get you get a mix of two different sounds, but like they they can make you feel like the same way, like just that that EDM boom boom like trance shit, like it's fucked. That's a lot of that can bring. Yeah, at the dungeon, it's always going hard at the dungeon. Like it's like that's where that's where the vibe matches the most, to be honest. Like just the dungeon, like they they get that. They get that place going every time. It's sick. And also people get like weird out because like the, the theme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, people. Because for someone like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. But honestly, like, it's a, it's a sick vibe. I, like, again, it was right under my nose. I, like, I remember I was outside the dungeon one time. Like, they weren't doing anything. But I, I read I read the place and I looked at the sign. And I was just like, like, do they, do they, like, fuck in here? Like, what is this, bro? Like, what is this? And then, like, going in and, what, like, experiencing the rave. Actually, I think it was a metal show first. So I think it was, like, the Blow Up Dolls and, like, Inf some shit. Yeah. And um, it was pretty cool. Like, just that vibe. I, I wouldn't have expected something so like that, that in the valley. Movie. Like, yeah, in the valley, like, I didn't think, you know... I thought it was boring here. <laughs> you know, I thought there wasn't much to do. But there's, there's there a few is, looks. You just have to find it. That's yeah. the hard part. And even then, like, you go, if you put, like, the Google Maps, this is Club, club Retro, not the dungeon. Yeah, even mm. the sign, too, is very hard to see, like, yeah. at the place. Like, where is it at? Mm -hmm. it's like it's like a, like a cigar shop or something like that. If you know, yeah, cigar you, cigar you bar know, you know. next to the cigar bar. Hell yeah. And I mean, that's a good thing. Like, there's more bands popping up like you guys because... Like after a while, like it becomes hard where you start seeing the same bands over and over again. So like you want new bands to like they get in there. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. That's yeah. That's probably one of the hardest parts, trying to get your, like the band in, 
in like part of the show or something. How do you guys deal with that? We all actually, we're usually the ones to open. So oh, we, we kind of yeah. set the mood yeah. usually. Like we're the ones to kind of start it. Well, we are the ones to start it off. So and literally all the times we play, we've just been opening. Yeah. And it's always good vibes too. Like <laughs> our first show, our first show, we played Mr. Mustache. And like we had like two people going crazy. And then our like most recent show, we played well our originals and like we saw some some movement. It was pretty cool, like seeing that, knowing that people can actually like get down to our noise, yeah. get down to like what what we're what we're doing, you know. It's sick. No, no, that's good because I mean that, that, that always becomes like the struggle where like you're trying to get the crowd to move. So sometimes you like you have to tell them to get closer to the stage. Yeah. So yeah. To move because sometimes people are just like I, mean, I don't like personally I don't like doing that, but I like um, we did it for the yeah, we, we we did it. We did it our last. Okay, we did it. We did our last show. We did it our last show. They think but like, that, like the pit is poison. Yeah, like, they're like, on. like, don't be scared. The the first show we are not the first show, but the um, our show at the Gremlin um, last week. Uh, they actually got up by themselves, which was really sick. Like we we were like halfway in our set, and like they they just went up like to the stage. And like we didn't tell them to do anything, but they were like, it was it was really cool, just like seeing like people actually engaged, and like just interested in what we were doing, and like having them come up to us afterwards too, you know, or do you have are you on Spotify? Like <laughs> you know, and shit like that. Like it's it's really cool, it's really cool. No, that's cool because I mean, it, again, that's always sort of where some bands where like, they're trying to get the cut forward, but like the fact that people are actually coming to you guys without you guys telling them that's. It's a good time where you guys are going. Yeah. Yeah. And like usually like they, they, they're up now, like they, they're like up watching us. So we do tell them like, come closer. You know, we don't, we don't we're, not, we're not, yeah, we don't, but we're not bad people. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty, it's interesting. It's very interesting and it, it's exciting as well. Like. It's always spontaneous. It's yeah, it's usually like it's just an idea that we one of us gets and it's either a riff or like a lyric line or something. It's just like some idea and we just show it to each other, like bring it to one another, see what we think about it. Yeah. And um we work on that and we just like create parts for it. And just just improvise and jam or something like that yeah i mean it always starts with an idea that comes from any one of us and then we just kind of it's snowball effect where we keep on adding stuff and improving and seeing changing oh this sounds better oh this sounds worse um well it's me i'm the bassist so usually i'm i'm only coming up with bass riffs uh i haven't really not really involved with the lyrics uh or the singing uh but when when I do hear what they have made and uh, I start to listen to it, I'm able to think of a baseline that might complement it well. And uh, I feel like that's the thing I do best for for my band is coming up with like little riffs and ideas that that you know wrap the whole song together. And it's funny because like he said that he didn't listen to metal before us, and our heaviest like song that we have is. A riff that yeah. he made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's literally. Cool as fuck. But, to, but like writing, writing the songs that like I sing and like even some like that I don't. Um, I always start off with acoustic. Like I usually, I usually just do something with my fingers and like, oh, that would sounds cool. And then I'll just like slide it down or up and it's like, oh, that complements it well. And then I'll, I'll just have that on acoustic and I'll try to like transfer that sound to electric but like have it more more heavy because like i said like our songs they can also be really soft like like we could we could we could like not be heavy if we didn't like want to we could be like really really chill about everything like we could not amp up our songs like with all yours that song could definitely be slow be a little lovey for sure but like i like to have that like little edge on it with like the distortion everything like that but yeah, writing writing is always spontaneous. I I don't I don't sit down. I'm like, oh, I want to get this song. Like you know, I just it's it was always actually when I worked. Like when I was working, I I like take a piece of paper from the fucking uh, receipt thing, yeah. like rip it out, and I just like write like a few lines that like just sounded good in my head. Um, 
and I'll just keep them in my wallet. And then if I find like a chord progression that, that, that it would go with, I'd add on to that. And it was always just, just random. Like I'd, I'd write my songs at work where I had <laughs> nothing. I was just country music. I worked at Bootcheck at the time. Yeah. Like it was, uh, and like, you know, so like writing those songs while like listening to country fucking all the time. So did it from influence to you or not? Like the country? country? I mean, I guess it, it, it's... Okay, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Like the love, the love part of it, you know, listening to like George Strait, like I told you so. Like this, like it just it hits. Like I'm not gonna lie, it's like ah, like goddamn, like it, it's it's cool, it's cool. I don't I don't mind country. Catch me like four years ago, I'd be like, eh. but yeah. I never understood the hate for country. Yeah, I mean it's it's not bad. I <laughs> hate it. It's about it. It's like. When they just sing about beers, trucks, and women. Yeah. Like, uh, That's probably the hate. Stuff, yeah. 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 Trucks. Beer. <laughs> but the way I write songs, I'm kind of... I do do, like, kind of, like, spontaneous like that, too. Where if I... I like, I, I write a lot of poetry, so I might, like, pick out an idea from one poem and then add it to, a, like, the new one. But the way I usually write my songs is... Um, is just having my guitar in front of me and having a pen and paper and just playing that chord progression over and over and humming something out like mm-hmm, and try to find a vibe to where I can uh, match the lyrics with that vibe. That's usually the way I go about writing songs. Probably like the only, yeah. Yeah, actually, like, like another thing about it, like with the chords that like, I have for like all yours and stuff, like it was just a hum in my head, like just like a, like just a melody in my head and like, I remember calling my friend. I was like, oh, I have this, like, idea for a song. He's like, well, fucking do it. And I was like, I don't know how. Like, I don't know if I can. And I just literally pulled it out of my ass. Like, I don't know how the fuck I did it. But I was just like, oh, there it is. <laughs> like, sick. You know, and now, now, like, even then, it was that, that's, I started that song off slow. And then having Devin drum over that, um, actually, the rhythm was still kind of slow. But then I told him just, like, have a one-two vibe. Like, one-two. Yeah, and then boom, it was perfect. I don't know how the song went by drumming with Sonic. Like, how you, like, do you have like a writing style yourself? Or, like, um, have you ever like write a song or no? With, have you? I've I, not lyrics, but like riffs, like little progressions here and then. I know for drumming, they could throw a riff down, and like, I instantly hear like the rhythm, like that I'm gonna play, or like what sounds too good. That's just like how my mind works, like which is any musical thing, and yeah. It just, it just goes with it. It really does. It's crazy. There's, there's one riff that he wrote recently. Uh, it's it's pretty sick. It has like an Alice in Chains vibe. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Brian actually created some lyrics for it. He helped me out with it. It's actually... You never know. I still need to make a bass line to it. Yeah, it's still in the works. That's the next step. See, that's, this is the process right yeah. here. He made a riff. He's make, he made the lyrics and, the, you know, added to the guitar. I'm making the bass and then... I'll do something. Yeah. Uh, I usually play, like, octaves or some shit. I don't fucking... Fucking... <laughs> like we all... Rhythm. Yeah. We all at least have, like, one song, one or two songs that, like, we've made. Like, each was... Yeah, it just started like, off from, like, one spark of yeah. something, somebody's idea, and then she's like, oh, we just feed onto that. Yeah, so like cool. With disease, it was disease was completely different as well. Yeah, like it was about my fucking. So I was so when I worked at Bootjack, I remember coming back from work. I uh, pulled up to his place. I was like, bro, my manager told me today, like, if I'm late again, just like go back home because I was always showing up late, bro. Because <laughs> it was early. I'm not an early like I can't wake up early. Like I have to wake up at like seven thirty. You know, like I'm not like that. <laughs> I'm not like that. I'm like pulling all nighters with him the night before, just fucking trying, like practicing, trying to get fucking bad fish down. <laughs> like it was, it was fucked up. But yeah, we we wrote that song like with that in mind. Like the the punchline was if you lay, then you go back home. But to me, like I didn't really see a crowd singing that back. So like I was just like, um. I went home and I was like fucking around. I, I had changed up like the chords and like the rhythm. And then I just, I only changed that that one, like the, the hook. I just changed the hook to just get, 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 get away. <laughs> like that's what it is now. And I mean, I could definitely see people just like pushing each other, telling each other to get away. Like, you know, so, yeah. It's pretty I'm smart. Glad he did that. You need to think about that word. Not only do you want to like, 
say your own words, but like you also want the words to be able to be easily and like repeatable by the audience. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, like that's that's like if I if we if we can get that crowd like engaged and like have them actually sing back with us, like sing with us, just yeah that would be yeah. fucking sick like if i if i if i know like one person in that crowd knows the lyrics like oh, but you actually care that's a dream <laughs> like, <laughs> like it'll happen soon i'm pretty sure yeah sick. exactly yeah, that I, that goes back to that we need to start releasing on spotify bro or everything all cloud fucking apple, apple. <laughs> Yeah, I have some recommendations, but I'll tell you like after the podcast. For oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Get keep top secret. <laughs> yeah, we gotta we gotta keep. keep. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's where I'm like, yeah, I don't know about you, but it's... yeah, no fuck yeah. <laughs> no, because I'm always open. I'm always open to like helping out bands with other like stuff. Because yeah. like when it comes to like making music and all stuff, like I'm not good at that. But like when it comes to connections, yeah, I can like tell you like okay, you should, these people are available. You should work with these people. Yeah, I bet. For sure. You said you you've done fifty shows already. This is gonna be yeah. This is gonna be the fifty first show. Nice. Yeah, then that's hell yeah. It's, it's crazy. Like it's really on like oh well, I'm my fifteen, twenties, and then like now I'm like fifty, I'm like, oh shit, like time passes really quick. Yeah. yeah. It really it's, does. it's scary. It really it's scary does. but it's also cool because then like now I'm just getting to the point where like people from other like like I can check my like, like once you guys start releasing music, later I can start checking your analytics and you can see like okay, people yeah. from this city, from this state, they're they're listening to your stuff. And like for me it's been people from the valley of course. But now I'm seeing people like from Austin, so I'm going on like, how the fuck are these people like, finding yeah. out? Interested. But it's again, it's the other bands that like go up there, so I mean, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah, and, like I recently also just talked from somebody like from Austin, and they're like, I'm surprised the scene down here is the way it is. Like being, because being in Austin, like the scene is, from what I've heard, is pretty big, booming, oh, popping. Yeah. Like it's crazy, and like they didn't think McAllen had that that same kind of spark i guess that 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 energy and it, it is here which is fucking awesome like it's so sick like have wrath like playing with them well they were noise complaining at the time but have wrath like they got us our first show and geez right there yeah yeah fucking awesome dude fucking awesome like they got us our first show and they've been so supportive and like just knowing like just they were they started where we were too like I think that we kind of like, no, uh, they were they were in there before. Yeah, us. they were they at were the in. same open mic that we played at the first one. Yeah, that yeah. was what Simply Blind did. But they had some no, some experience, playing. but like they were they were still starting experience. off like the way we were, which was, which was sick. Yeah, they're going, going everywhere. Yeah, they yeah. deserve that. They're Dude, so badass. Ooh. Like something crazy. Like, <laughs> something <laughs> it's insane just what he does with the guitar and like the bassist too. Like the bassist. The wall pedal, yeah, it's with crazy. the wall pedal, and it was funny because we talked to Marcy and the basses afterwards, um, and he was like, "Wow, I'm proud of y'all!" Like it started from us two just playing yeah. with two guitars, just naked on he stage. Brought it into perspective, and that then night. like, nah, we have a drummer and a bassist. It's like, yeah, wow, pretty sick. So keep getting better and better. Yeah, it's keep only going up from up. here. We got you. That's what we always say. We got you. That'd be consistent we gotta yeah that's the only part you have to be really care be careful on consistency yeah mm -hmm. that's it's the easiest thing to do but also the hardest thing to do yeah i mean it's, we get it's, tired it's sometimes. fun though it's so fun like experiencing this kind of i mean i'm not deep in the lifestyle i'm not like you know but like just seeing how all these people are moving how all these people are like you know getting around with the scene and just the environment it's it's really cool like knowing that a lot of like that that person that you know they know that person that is connected with this and connected with that like like it's sick yeah. awesome that's what it was for me in the beginning where like I like I'm not even from my cabin so learning that everybody knows each other I'm like oh shit so yeah, it's, it's kind of scary I'm not gonna lie <laughs> it's kind of scary it's like some people that like, went to see high schools and all that stuff so like everybody knows each other and I'm like, here, like I don't know anybody yeah <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's cool. Like you start building the community. Yeah, yeah. And like every, everybody in the uh, the scene knows you. I'm, I'm well, I bet because you know you interview all these yeah, bands and, and, out so, and everything like that. It's pretty sick. And like it just and not and not only helps you with your your podcast and your business, but it also helps you as a person to reach out and get to know other people. It's just sick. Yeah. And it's also helping with us that too. Like with my confidence. Yeah. Oh, uh, before, not talk to one person just. 
just, I don't know. I, I wasn't as social as I am You're now. Sure. Yeah. Well, I'm not introverted, but like. I was. I'm, yeah. I was, but now. Not, it, not as outgoing. Yeah. It's because you have to learn how to be, you have to learn how to talk to people. You have to learn how to, you know, communicate. You have to learn how to reach out to people, ask, you know, not be, not be shy to ask for things and not be. Uh, shy to ask for opportunities and stuff like that. Gotta be righteous. Yeah, you have to take what's yours, you know. Yeah, but that's a nerd trick there. Yeah, <laughs> take what's yours. <laughs> uh, but yeah. <laughs> how much time gets them available? Because I don't want to take up too much of it already. How, how deep are we in? Um, that's a good question. How deep? How deep are we in? We're about an hour and ten minutes in. Oh wow. Yeah, thank you really quick. How uh, how long are the shows usually? Oof. Uh, typically like an hour and 30. An hour but I make a range anywhere because some go up to three hours. Damn. Yeah, that's oh, yeah, that's crazy. Again. But uh, the usual is an hour and 30. I'm yeah, but just me neither. Just making sure I don't want to. Yeah, uh, no, do you have any more questions you did you want to? Honestly, I don't even like when it comes to like okay, so when it comes to the podcast, I don't have any questions like written up or like. Got you, got you. It's just how the it's conversation goes. Got you, got you. Yeah. Right. Uh, nice chopping it up. It's fun, but also like puts you on the on the ground your feet because I'm like, what's next? Yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> like anytime, like when it, like when it comes to like, it comes to like based on your conversation, like whatever you guys say, like I have to pay attention. Like okay, this is the next question. Because some people like when you're talking to them, they don't really listen to you. They already have like, the next thing. Like they already know what they want to talk about. Yeah. So they actually force you on that. And yeah. For me, I listen to you guys, and I'm like, okay, where do we take this conversation next? Yeah, I have a background like in advertising, psychology, and all that stuff. It's kind of, it's a mix. Psychology as well. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, because I always been curious on why people do the the things they do. Yeah, so me too. Are, yeah, yeah, you can see like, how the brain works. Yeah, and musicians tend to be really interesting because my lifestyle is like very different from musicians because like mine is like a typical nine to five like lifestyle, but musicians like like once it comes to like Larry writing, like all these guys, like they actually tour around. It's a very different lifestyle from the average person. Yeah, yeah. And for me, like, I'm not really creative. Yeah, because honestly, like, after shows, I'm up the rest of the night. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't sleep until the I'll morning. Right back. Go for it. Fucking nose is acting up. I don't know what's going on. And, yeah. like, trying to do that with a normal job, like, being a musician and having a normal job is super cool. crazy. Um, that's why, yeah, it, it is pretty weird that, like, the type of lifestyle that we have, because, you know, we... We practice at our own time and it's like we don't get paid to practice but mm -hmm. it's it doesn't feel bad that we're doing it it's like it's just fun it's kind of the determination that comes into play mm -hmm. with all that this wanting to jam even though there's not really like yeah we're getting something out of it like you know just as a, in a band but there's not really we're working up towards something towards mm -hmm. a, a goal that's just like inevitable for us it's fate yeah. Well, yeah, it's it's completely different. It's a it's it's a lifestyle. Is what it is. It's, uh, you know, you have to dedicate so much time to perfecting this this, this craft and getting better every day. Uh, it, that comes with you know its own consequences. And you have to put you know time away with maybe friends or family, and uh, yeah, dedicate more time to this. And, you know, I, I said before, like, I'm an artist that takes a lot of time out of my day as well. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, and I'm a student as well. So I'm you know, studying, drawing, uh, practicing bass and, you know, spending time with my family. So it's like a... Yeah, to balance uh, everything off. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really, it can be hard to manage my time uh, efficiently all the time. But it's, it's just one payoff, you know. I, I still love you know, playing music and... Uh, I feel like that, that to me is like my break from mm -hmm. everything else. And it, it makes the, the ride and life just easy. Yeah, the skipism. And it also sucks because like, if we do ever end up touring, it's going to be hard for us to just have time to be with our family because we're literally going to be away mm -hmm. just from here. And which sometimes is a good thing, but like, you know, at a certain point, at that, you know, that ride, you should be like, fuck, I wanna go home, I wanna see family, friends. Um, but, you know, it's just like, 
we signed up to do this and mm-hmm. like I literally wouldn't wouldn't want to see myself doing anything else but just playing music. And that's just something you're just gonna have to live just face with, yeah. Mm-hmm. You have to live with the fact that you're spending time doing this instead of, you know, spending time with them. Or like also doing a or also relationships too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Or like finding a a career path that's just already you know have a path. I don't know. Just, like for us, we're just we're artists, so we just I don't know. We I seem like we fall continuously and fall yeah. to like the pit. Yeah, so it's like a dream because like. When it comes to being like a lawyer, doctor, like it's already like a set path. Yeah. yeah when it comes exactly. to being a musician, it's, it's like really yeah. It's a leap of faith. It's really yes, yeah. 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 That's exactly. What it is. Yeah, that's the scary part. Where like there is no like okay, no, this is the next step. This is the next step. No, it just it's either you make it or you don't. That's the scary part. But it's like the risk that you know we're willing to take because we love the music that we make so much. Mm-hmm. It's like the sacrifice, but. It's it's gonna it's gonna be hard like for sure it's just gonna get harder but you know, it'll be fun yeah you're, you're gonna get a bunch of crazy stories from your toys hell yeah that's that's exactly what I think <laughs> about. like I'm gonna be on my deathbed man if I you know didn't do like took up music I would have been like some stuck up I don't know just some I don't know just because yeah, even even if you guys don't make it let's just say that for example like the fact that you guys took the chance to even yeah. do this becomes a it becomes a big thing because like I I still work at Home Depot. And like you would hear like the old people talk about like oh that guy would show would have done this, I wish I would have done that and they're just working twenty, thirty years. Yeah, no. That's like that's that's it. Miserable. Like, yeah, they talk about like their back pains, your surgeries, I'm like, ooh. Those are the interesting things in there. Yeah, and, but like they never like but sometimes it's like they never gave a shot to like their actual dreams. They just work because to like support their family and that's that's the end of life. Yeah, that's why, like, when you're young, like, take, take these opportunities, be as, be as risky as you can, because you can, you can, like, take it right now. Yeah. There's like, more responsibilities when you get older. Like, imagine if we're, like, 35 or something. We have, like, beer bellies. Yeah. Just, yeah, let's do it, man. Let's just yeah. do it. Because yeah. then you guys deal with your job. Yeah, nah. Personal family, and then... To live a... Uh, uh, to be an unordinary person, you have to live an or- or- ordinary life, you know? Like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Actually, recently I've been I've been on YouTube watching <laughs> compilations of the worst bands, and it's it's really funny, honestly. Like, <laughs> it's so funny. It's it's really good. Like, it's not an ego boost, but it's kind of an ego boost. <laughs> like, it's like oh, okay, but, like that could be us. Um, if we don't yeah, like-, like what you said before, that that's what kind of reminded me of like these like older men, like when they're in like already their thirties, forties, like just starting a band, and like they they're not really confident, and they're just like playing covers it's like ah oh, man like like they could, they have, could have done that when so they were young ago. you know they did that when they're young maybe when they're like more creative not live, living that life where they're just working to yeah. live you know i feel like they were just scared to take that that That's leap it. of faith you know what i'm saying so they rather just like because like they settle down they're yeah. good financially where they are because like with their their own business but they realize that oh wow my main calling was music so like now i guess i have this chance now that like uh, 30 years later or whatever and it's just yeah and my mom's really been busting my balls with this question do you have a five-year plan like what's your plan i'm just i hate that question i hate that question because honestly i don't have a plan but i also have no idea like what's even like what's gonna happen in five years like i have no control over over that really and some people have like that dead set plan like oh yeah i'm gonna be a doctor i'm gonna be a you know etc um not me to be honest so i'm literally just winging it just trying to ride whatever this is like just crossing my fingers i <laughs> really like it's I, it's but scary I, but it's fun i feel like well if we don't make it you know we'll figure it out at that point like we have time you know to do that yeah um, everything will be all right as long as you're breathing and eating you're cool yeah paying my bills water bill <laughs> <laughs> yeah fuck. yeah my mom my mom snagged a hundred dollars from me the other day in front of in front of my homies, bro. In front of the band. <laughs> in front of the band, bro. I was like, damn. Yeah. He got robbed, bro. <laughs> it's all good though. 
but actually, well, not really, because I'm unemployed. We're all. <laughs> I we worked at well, him and I worked at Kamoi for a little bit. Um, oh, that it was fun actually. Like getting out of my comfort zone, still like talking to people. And uh, that was yeah, also my first server us. job. It was fun, honestly. Like just hey, yeah, but first it was also tiring. It's also tiring, first like, yeah, you know, like, like uh, working at food service. Like, no, fuck yeah. I mean, like, of course you get dickheads, but like that's just part of it. Like, you're you're gonna also meet some really cool people. Like even connections. Like, like my coworkers, like they hook it up. They're they're fucking sick. They're awesome. Well, ex coworkers. Shout out to Kamori and Nolana. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, sick. Uh, the management. Uh, it was sick. No. Actually, it was super cool. First, our old manager Todd. I miss him, but they replaced him and it just became super just like not good so yeah, and, and also a new supervisor came in to try to change up the restaurant only thing he changed up was th the adding table setup, ramekins dude. two ramekins to the whole yeah, setup. just the table setup he literally just changed the table setup he, he made he ass. made everybody like paint like he made yeah like it, it was like they didn't hire anybody to like actually paint they just had like the sushi guys paint paint the restaurant <laughs> And, no, like, and, and like spray paint too just yeah dude in the kitchen just spraying painting low mass no oh, just that's yeah. no. yeah, pretty crazy <laughs> fumes. Little little shady, but, hey, but hey shout out shout, shout out, out. <laughs> shout shout out, out to him. yeah <laughs> no fuck yeah uh and then my first job was at a doggy daycare that was fun taking care of dogs but it was kind of also sketchy um i'd get paid in cash in an envelope and i'd be staying i was 16 so i'd be staying like overnight taking care of dogs which is like not legal but yeah. hey the pay was crazy for him, for him by being being that age like i was making like 450 a week it felt nice like i was getting that money but it was also kind of crazy because now like i know like that money isn't even like can't get that money easy like that uh, i mean other than that job i guess but like you gotta work for that shit like serving like tips like sometimes i'd leave with like 150 a day and another another day i'd leave with 30 bucks like it was oh, so yeah yeah like i said this work at pizza hut like a long time ago and what i noticed was this is really weird but like the ones who would tip me the most were like people who were drug dealers compared to teachers yeah <laughs> like, it's like i got like a, like a job to a school i'm like Dude. oh they're not gonna tip people like people in scrubs pull up to Kamori, they don't tip yeah, people yeah, people yeah. in scrubs are like and like the people that actually like own the place too they, pff, i didn't get anything from them but like the nice little families where you actually make a good impression, you know, put on a smile. The like, older oh, people, really, they got really, they really got money. sweet. I'm gonna give you some money, like you know, like it's sick as fuck. Yeah, because like I'll put up like to the hood, basically. Yeah. Um, and they're like with the, with the pizza hut logo, or whatever. And I'm like, oh damn, it's just like what do we get jumped for? Something? Never, never. Oh, he's so sweet. They're they're just minding their business. Yeah, they open, they open the door like what's what I call a pot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh shit! Like, you know, they have the munchies. No, but and he's gonna give like twenty. You were their savior, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> bro. You were their favorite person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they open up and they just give me like what? Like, they just like to open their wallet and like here, just take this. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the change. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, those guys were badass, and then like the teachers, like I, th I thought they would be like the most understanding. And now they're like, you see them in the office. Yeah, <laughs> they don't give a fuck. They don't. It's interesting. Uh, That's why like, I love I love learning about persons and like food service jobs. Like you learn, you really learn about people. Like, yeah, you do. Yeah. Their needs and whenever they're hungry and don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I work at a a food truck, uh, Diego's food truck in that universe or on that business eighty three. You know where it is? Yeah. Yeah, there that that parking lot, and I've been working there for like a year now. I haven't worked there in a while just because I came back from the trip, but. Um, Dude, yeah, it's it's it, you learn a lot of from people. Like, there's this one time this lady got so mad because like we messed up an order and she didn't get her burger on time and she was waiting for like 30 minutes to an hour, and yeah, she was livid. Yeah, she was pissed. She was screaming Especially at the, the cooks. Here, bro. Yeah, no, yeah, they don't care. The city in America. Yeah, <laughs> they want their That's food crazy. right. Yeah. And then like, uh, I mean. Now I think about it, like working there, and there were some times where like people like with the sauces, they were, with the managers, they were like, "Don't give out that much sauce. You can't give, you can't be giving that much sauce. It's a waste of sauce. You gotta save money, or whatever, whatever." But then there's people, you know, like they want, they want more. Like they want, like let me get that sauce in a bowl. And it's just like I can't like give you thing. that, you know. I, I'm sorry, like I want to tend to your needs, but. Yeah, it's the hardest they're, thing. They're gonna, they're, they're gonna, they're gonna bitch me out, man. <laughs> you know, like. That was that was 
I guess the only struggle. And it was fun too, like making drinks. Oh, bro. Like I've never done that before. Like being behind the bar, like <laughs> fucking just whipping it up. Like <laughs> it was sick as fuck. It was fucking sick as fuck. Like, and then you you pull it, you pull it to the table, you pull it to the table with the drink, you know, and then you pour it up and they're like, mm, you know, and then sometimes you have extra, you like give them the extra and then they give you the tip, you know, like, so got to but. And what's basically the, the places that allow you to keep your tips, you know? Yeah, yeah. Some places where like you got, you got to pull everything together. I mean, like, okay, so with cash tips, that's all us. But like with the tips we get, like on the, what like the device that we would use, um, it would go also towards like the sushi, like the bar, and like the to go runners. Like we we tip out, and um, sometimes that like bring me down. <laughs> sometimes that would bring me like down, but fifteen bucks just gone. Yeah. I went to that experience with Home Depot because um, technically you're not supposed to get accept tips at Home Depot. Yeah. Some people will, you know, they were like... Yeah, because you would, you would just help them out, right? Yeah, because like, 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 I worked as a lot loader. It's a service, yeah, man. Like, yeah, like, I would like, help them load on like, the lumber and all that stuff, uh, cement bags. And sometimes like, there were people like, oh, you can stop, but like, like, okay. Yeah. And they would give like 10 bucks and like, you're not supposed to, you're, if, you, if, you, like, if they catch you accepting money, like, you'll get fired instantly. So like, I would be like, the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Quick load. Load. Yeah, yeah. yeah Fast hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because like the, the, what you're actually supposed to do is like turn in the money, and it goes to, like the. Um, so you gotta donate to the. To like the fund, like, <laughs> the fund, fund whatever. That's so whatever. stupid. Yeah, no, you yeah. just buy pizza like for like once in a while. Like, oh, good job, guys. Here's pizza. <laughs> I mean, I guess they're giving it back, but could be just yours. I guess what the the hardest part of being employed was just finding time to just jam. Yeah, that's oh, it. Because I know yeah. there was times where Damien had to work like doubles. We and had the I, opposite yeah, shift. Like our managers have, hated yeah, I'd us have a double. Together. I'd have a double on like a show the same day. It was like it was that. Crazy. <laughs> that was, it's hard, but I mean, now I have more time to like focus on this. But I also still need to keep my money up. I'm trying so hard not to spend it. Like I go, I go out to like a little like event at Moonbeams, or I go to like Barnes and Noble, go to like the vinyl section. I want to splurge, like just <laughs> hella money. But it's I gotta save right now. It's hard, especially if I want to like put more money into like this as well. Like that's the thing, cause we we yeah. need we need money <laughs> we need money to spend or to make money. We need to spend money, and it's hard because we need it's money to spend money it's a little risk but yeah the society so capitalism you, think you, you have to like throw some risk in like like all this equipment yeah it's bought with the credit cards like i, I owe like thousands yeah no. fuck it yeah but i mean that's hopefully how, you can make it back yeah yeah it's like i've already paid it off like get your credit up in march oh sure yeah. so, like i had this Netflix in last year and i've already paid it off in march I and mean, you really do have to like Use money to make money. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy it's, ass philosophy, yeah. but it's true. It's the yeah. only way to live live out life now. Life. Uh, yeah, it's scary because, I mean, I wouldn't recommend you guys do that. It's just be careful. Yeah, no, I for know, sure. Like, and even then, like, also just college, school, education. I hear a lot of good and bad. You know, the benefits, but then also just like debt. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's I don't know and like if I were to go to college I don't even I don't know what I'd want to do what are like, you good at what am I good at mm -hmm. I don't know if I have a pinpoint on like you know like um, there's gonna be a skill that you're like good at I think I'm alright like I'm I'm decent with music like I just I'm more creative I guess I want to say I'm not really into like, um, like the mathematic science. Oh yeah, I was an FFA. That was fun. Actually, agriculture would be cool. I'm also certified in welding. Okay, then you know what? Okay, I'm oh, certified yeah. in welding. Okay, um, I, okay, so I have some <laughs> options. But like the thing is, it's just like I don't want to do that. Like this is this is really what I want to do. Just and people, people. yeah. <laughs> I could <laughs> I could have uh, no, but. Um, I'd, I'd rather do this for sure, but it's just that risk, you know, I don't, it's not like for sure that we're going to make it and, you know, but it, it is fun. It is really fun and I really enjoy doing it. And if I could keep doing it, then for sure I would like, I don't want to be welding, you know, of course it's good money, but yeah, fuck, dude, it's, it's just like money. 
I'm gonna go blind. My fucking hearing's gonna be gone. I mean, it's still probably gonna be gone. Like with with this, we're fucking. What kind of welding? Like underwater, or like uh, not underwater, but like. I was just stick welding. Or? I was just stick welding. I, I started off stick, like just working on my, on my on my lines, my my dimes, <laughs> shit like that. The dime but, bags. Yeah, but um, I don't want to do that. It's fucking hot. Fucking sweat. Bleh. Here. Yeah, it's so fucking out here for it's no so reason. Ridiculous. And like with this, the AC unit, like middle of the day, like it's barely like it's holding on. <laughs> like, I'm like I'm like but I'm like I don't I don't need a blanket or anything. Like I'm just I gotta stay still or like else Devin's like I'll corner fucking die. Over there is hell. Yeah, like, <laughs> Devin's yeah. corner is fucked. Just gonna get me started. So drum so corner. Hard. Drummer's hell. Yeah. <laughs> the little pit. The little corner. <laughs> but now, yeah. But hey, it builds our stam stamina. Stamina. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, the drummers, you really do this. It's a workout. Yeah. Yeah, especially when he the does. One's just, moving the most. But just having like, just one crash and a hi hat, I move. I move around pretty much, like a good amount. Yeah. We need to. We need to invest in that kit, man. This kit is holding insane. on. Holding on for dear life. Yeah, I he like, had sticks for three days. Those are gone. <laughs> not, not, <laughs> was it three days? It was like three, four days. <laughs> they're, they're, That's crazy. They're, they're, I just see like while we're performing, just <laughs> no, a, yeah, a yeah, blink so out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, no. It was, then my my symbol stand. Then my symbol actually. Yeah, yeah I just kept stand. falling throughout the, the set. Was, it's crazy. We had to we had to have a plastic bag right there. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 it's like a little. It's no, work in DIY. progress. Yeah, work in progress. It, it, it gets the job done for sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it holds yeah. up. Sometimes. Like, even our equipment, this this amp is um, John Mendes' dad. Like, this is not even mine. And I, well, I, I guess it's mine now, but <laughs> I'm the only one who plays it. And, like, I just had it for the longest time. And then that's this, my Squire Strat is just, like, like $130 or something just the cheapest guitar you can get like when you start but it does a drip yeah. so I think my, my my guitar my Ibanez was like out of a pawn shop my my amp I went half and half with my mom my pedals I, I bought all my pedals but yeah no like it's a, a little bit of equipment but it it gets the job it's done all you need yeah, yeah like it's need. literally like what he's told me like that your tone is literally just in the way you play like, of course, you can, like, keep fucking with, like, you know, like, I bought an EQ pedal, like, you can fuck with the EQ, you know, like, you know, get, get like, a certain certain sound off that, but, like, literally, just the way you're playing, you know, that's how, that's how you're going to sound. It's how those fingers sound on them strings. Yeah. It's how them fingers sound on them strings. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the last question, and, oh, I think we should wrap it up, Gordon. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit, it's almost 10. No, it's almost like, okay, you're good. No, cause, like for me, like I live like 40, 40, 50 minutes away from here. Oh, oh yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I mean, always, but either way, like I always like just driving. Cause it's calm. Yeah, except thanks. for the, the far area. That's or I don't know, like that area is just yeah, it's yeah. yeah. so yeah. fucked up. Always construction. Yeah, and it's never gonna be done. Yeah, I saw a meme. Was like, it's gonna be twenty. Uh, 45 and there's gonna be flying cars and they're still gonna be making the, the, the highway. highway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, taking their time. So, uh, well, two questions. Um, what advice would you give bands that are birdie starting off? Like, what, what would you tell them? Consistency. Um, try to get you know with your bandmates as much as possible because so y'all can just start building that chemistry because. That's literally what it is, just chemistry and a relationship with, with each other. Because if, like, we, if you have an idea that I don't like, we, we got to communicate through that. Yeah, we got to yeah. find our way through it. Yeah, no. Because if, if not, then it's just going to be that tension within us. And yeah. it's just going to keep building it. Even kind of recently, like, before our show, like, uh, like, like I said, he, he got back, like, two, two days before. And then, you know, the parts were changing just a little bit. And like he played some chords, and I, I told him I was like, ah. <laughs> I was like come on, bro, like, come on, like, <laughs> you know. But it, it's you can't can't get butthurt about it. Like I, I totally get like, oh, nah, I don't like that. What you doing? Like I'd be like, all right, 
I figure something out then. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like as long as we're like able to communicate about yeah. it, I feel like that's and that's the point for you. And definitely like also just for bands that are getting started, like don't focus too much on like what others like really gotta like think about it. Just do you have fun. Like do it do it like like honestly like you wanna hear for yourself, you know, like just what what sounds, what noise like makes you happy. Yeah, don't be intimidated by the sound of yeah. the scene. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, be righteous with your sound. Cause yeah, you don't really conform. You know, you don't have to change your sound just because it's not what's the most popular. You need to be true to yourselves. And, you know, the best the best advice is just to play with, with, with each other, to build that relationship, to build that chemistry, to build that trust in each other. Uh, uh, that's something that, that just comes with time and just comes with practice. And, uh, you know, getting, you know, connected, not being, uh, shy, uh, taking your opportunities and, uh, you know, getting your name out there if you want to be, to get more shows and stuff like that. That's probably, that's it's, it's the sound, it's the sound, it's your sound. <laughs> yeah. And like, honestly, if, if you like the way it sounds it might be like a little immature in the moment but like definitely within time like your sound will also mature with you like you'll you'll find you'll find things that you like now and then maybe a year later you won't really like it and you'll you but you but you'll build off of what you were before you know like looking back at like where we started again like just playing covers having 20 minute videos on my phone of just bad fish nirvana songs just me fucking up super stiff like it, it's crazy to think it's it's crazy to think like now like where we are and we're not even that big we're really not even that big but it's just the support that we're getting is really really cool really really cool and like you just got to be a good vibe be be nice <laughs> you know be cool yeah. with everybody and respectful yeah they'll they'll fuck with you you know we're not we're not scary i'm not i don't think i'm scary i, I mean I, honestly like getting into the scene i was pretty intimidated but it's really not intimidating everybody here is everybody's really supportive you know if you're trying to do what you want to do they're gonna try and help you find that do that what are you doing well i feel like everyone's unique you know what i'm saying Everyone has their own sound, especially like in a band, an upcoming band. Gotta understand that everyone's unique. They, like each band member has their own sound. But if you're able to just like, just communicate with your band and, and just have a sense of where y'all wanna like really just end up. Like without, I feel like without discipline, commitment, you'll never start. Without consistency, you'll never finish. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's just kind of my philosophy. So some words of wisdom right there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true. You really put in perspective yeah. some. Yeah, it's funny because Devin, he's like, you might look super chill, but you look high all the time. But you might you might not even be like high, but you just, I, I get that you just look that. Yeah, yeah, I get that but he's so chill. But once he gets like, starts doing some physical activity, just all of that energy just comes out. Just yeah. Whoosh. Like he'll be, he'll be like right in his wave, like just chilling. Right in his wave, jumping into the air. Yeah. <laughs> shout yeah, out, shout he'll, out. He'll be, he'll be doing him like, you know, chill as fuck. And then once he gets behind the kid, or just like, Active, like he'll, he's active. <laughs> like, because like most of the time, drummers tend to be like the crazy ones in the band, but they're pretty chill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, yeah, for sure. sure. It's fucking, it's awesome. The last question is, uh, what's your favorite part of the podcast? Just being able to just sit down, just talk. Yeah, yeah. you know. What I'm saying? Like honestly, I progressively got more. I got more comfortable, which was sick. Yeah, like I, the like, first type of sound like. Yeah. 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 Like honestly, th this is this is really cool. Like the whole podcast, honestly, I, I don't have a favorite part. There's it was all good vibes. Honestly, like my favorite part about doing this is getting to like understand what we want as a band and yeah. where we came from like, too. Yeah, yeah. like th the questions that you asked is like Put it makes us yeah think about you know how we perceive. The music that we make and it's pretty cool to think about like on the spot recorded 
it's it's fucking it's raw. sick. Yeah, Joe, you uh, you made us contemplate, and yeah, so other people yeah. can <laughs> think of it. Do you know Torti or no? Torti? The rapper? Yeah, Torti. Yeah. He, he, he thinks that these are like therapy sessions. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, it kind of felt like it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I see it. I see. Nobody else. I appreciate having you guys on. I mean, you can see the chemistry like, where where everybody fits in. Everything. It's really cool. I still need to see you guys live. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Next show, next Dude, show, man. Six. Be there. Shout out to Nico for getting us that show. Shout out to Nico for getting us that show. Your social medias, uh, any upcoming shows? Because usually a uh, podcast takes like a week or two to like upload. Okay. So can anything past that? Uh, um, uh, we don't have any shows booked after or before July sixth. So if this doesn't come out until then, well, hopefully we will see you. But. Um, our Instagram, it's uh, it's Fate Band on Instagram. The it with the Z. We also have a, started a TikTok called Fate Band. Go f- check that out. Um, we need to do a Facebook. We uh, we also have a YouTube channel. Um, it's under my name, but I need to change it. It's Fernando Rodriguez. You can see like all our live clips. I should actually send it to you. Um, yeah, uh, so we have like at the Hop Shop. And um, some some songs from the Gremlin. It's it's pretty cool to, to like see how we sound. Um, but other than that, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, social medias. Yeah, that would be it. I think so far. Merch yeah, coming, coming soon. Merch coming soon. The shows. We have more shows coming up for sure. But yeah, next month on the sixth. We hope to see you guys there. Yeah. Smash the like. Like, subscribe, like, subscribe, like, yeah, subscribe. Yeah. Click the link below. See you soon. Fuck yeah. It's fate. <laughs> it's fate. Fuck yeah. Well, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one.